Nathaniel Wood, welcome back to BT Sport and UFC London Fight Week. Yes. It's finally back here. Man, you've been on a journey this mm -hmm. year because while the rest of us were celebrating in March, this incredible night for UK MMA, so many big wins, fans back in the audience, everything else. I don't know whether you were in the venue or whether you were back at home, but somewhere I'm sure you had a little tear in your eye. Yeah, it was bittersweet, you know, being in, Dana obviously sorted out South some tickets. I got to watch the fights, you know, right next to the cage. It was amazing. You know, the whole experience was unbelievable. But knowing that I should have been in there and being, you know, the only London fighter on the, from the UFC roster, it did suck a bit, you know. Um, it was a hard pill to swallow. So, but it's the game we're in, you know, the, the, everything happens for a reason. Um, and here we are now, a few months later, and I get to do it all again. And now that I know what that crowd was like, it's going to be even more special. Yeah. Tell us something quickly, just remind us about that fight week. What day did you find out? When did you know your fight wasn't going to happen and couldn't get a replacement opponent in? So I think it might have been on the Wednesday that I heard he had pulled out. Um, it was two weeks before the original guy pulled out, had a replacement, then found out he pulled out. And then I had another day where we was kind of like, you know, we might be able to find someone. And then on the day of the weight cut, the Thursday, obviously I would have been cutting weight that night. They said, look, you know, no one's got the medicals that can come in right now. Um, I was getting loads of people messaging me about every Tom, Dick and Harry, you know, this guy will fight you. It's like, you're not signed by the UFC. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was the Thursday evening, just before I started my weight cut, that's when it uh, got pulled and it was weird. You know, straight away I was thinking, get me some food. Yeah, yeah. And then as soon as I was eating it, you know, realizing that you're not on that card after having probably a 10, 12 week fight camp, which went amazing. Um, yeah, it, it sucked for sure. Did it, how long did it take you to recover from it? Was it, you know, was it a week or two later where you kind of went, you know what, this is fighting, brush myself down, crack yeah. on, go again? It, it was hard, it was uh, the week after, I was just itching, buzzing to get back in, right, let's go, you know, I was like, well, I don't even want to have any rest time, but after that week, it was like, right, you know, having a 12 week fight camp, being at your peak, you can't maintain that, so you have got to just chill out. I booked a little holiday with my girlfriend, um, and just tried to force myself to just not think about fighting, but that's all I could think about. Yeah. Um, so it was weird. And obviously where the weight cut was tough, the guy didn't even end up fighting. You know, I was like, it's time to go up a weight now. So um, yeah, things have been a little bit different this camp. It's been a lot easier, a lot more healthy and enjoyable. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to Saturday night and getting to show everyone what I've been doing. It's, well, I was trying to say it feels like forever. It's actually 21 months since we were in Abu Dhabi, fight mm -hmm. Ireland, your fight against Casey Kenny, the fight of the night, it was absolutely brilliant. When you left the octagon that <laughs> night, obviously deflated. Could you have even imagined then it would be 21 months before you finally got to throw leather again? No, no, you know, as soon as obviously I came out of that fight, I knew that I'd kind of mashed my hand up. Um, you know, I knew it was bad. So I kind of in my head thought, you know, you're gonna be off for a few months at least, maybe six months, 21 months. No, I didn't expect that. You know, I know it's not all been my fault, you know, I've had opponents pull out as well. Um, but it's a good job I got a bonus for that fight, otherwise, you know, I would have been struggling um, yeah. financially. Talk to me about this move to featherweight as well, because, you know, the first question is why, why now? You know, yeah. 28 years of age, is it because of the layoff? Will there be a move back to bantamweight in the future? Or is this you now, are you, is this your, your new weight division? So I think for now it's definitely going to be my new weight division. Um, where I've had so long off, my body's just grown. You know, mm. I've actually had 21 months where I haven't had to do any serious weight cuts and I've allowed my muscles to just feel properly. So, you know, I used to walk around a certain weight, a little bit porky, a little bit fat, and now I'm walking around shredded at that weight. So that last fight was killing me to, to make the weight already. You know, it was hard. I think there was a video where I was absolutely shredded, you know, I had veins all over my body, it went viral, people were saying, you know, cool, he looks like death, mm -hmm. and I still had seven kilos to cut. So there is that stage where you look and think, you know, how long can I do this until it affects my health, you know, permanently, you know, I don't want kidney failure or whatever, you know, the stuff is that comes with cutting serious amounts of weight. But I'm also confident in my skill set that I can handle myself with any 145er in the world. You know, we've got 145ers in the gym, I'm not smaller than them, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit shorter maybe than most of them on the roster, mm -hmm. but if you think size is going to make a, a difference in height wise, it's not, you know, it's how you use that. I think with Charles Rosa, he's a couple of inches taller than me, but we've got the same reach, yeah. you know, I've got very got nice long arms, arms, very long yeah. legs, um, 
and I know how to use my range. So, you know, I'm confident in my skill set that I can go up a weight and handle myself fine. If anything goes wrong in the fight, I'm not going to be sitting there blaming the weight. You know, yeah. I think everyone needs to do it. And part of me thinks that the guys that are cutting serious amount of weights, you know, are you not confident in your skill set? Mm -hmm. You know, if there was a, a fight and someone come up to you on the street and said, well, let, we're going, I'm not going to go, whoa, you know, how, how many kilos have you got on me? Yeah, yeah. So I think Charles might have a kilo on me if that, you know, I'm, I'm not a small 145er. I still no. have a lot to cut. This week, I still have a lot to cut. Um, but it's just a lot safer in, in my eyes at doing it at 145. Has it been nice doing a camp where you've, you've been able to focus on technique rather than so far out, 10 weeks out, Right, the cut starts now. Yeah, 100%. Usually my fight camps, all it's about is making weight. Yeah. I train all year round, so I'm always fit. You know, I'm always ready to fight. This is what I do for my living. So now I can actually have a fight camp that has been solely focused on me fighting on an opponent. You know, what does my guy do working around that, becoming a better athlete instead of literally just calories in, calories out. And it's nice just to be able to rehydrate properly. You know, after a training session, I can go home, actually have a proper meal, mm -hmm. you know, a protein shake without feeling guilty. And that's how athletes are supposed to be. You know, I think we might be one of the only sports that does this whole weight cutting thing the way we Suffer. do it. <laughs> yeah, and do you know what it is? Well? I, I picked this because I loved it. You know, I love yeah. MMA and this is what I do with my life. But when you're cutting so much weight that you don't no longer enjoy it, yeah. it's not really winning anymore. So, of course. you know, I'm going to go up a weight and you know, I'm confident in my skill set. As I say, I've got many people in the gym that are, uh, I'm even training with 155ers and I'm not, you know, having any real issues weight-wise. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. But I don't want to close the door on 135 just because there are some matchups that I would like to eventually get in the future, but mm -hmm. I know that I'm gonna have to work my way up to get them. Talk to me about Rosser as well, because he's a fighter that's familiar with your coach, Brad. Mm -hmm. They trained together at ATT for many years, I believe. So. Yep. Is there, is there inside knowledge there? When the fight came around, did Brad kind of jump at it? I, I know plenty about him. And yeah, for sure. Straight away, Brad was a bit like, oh, you know, a bit gutted maybe because he is friends with Rosa. Mm -hmm. But he's not family is what Brad said to me. So, yeah. you know, he's been there every step of the way for me. Luckily, my, my also my coach, Ashley Grimshaw, has trained with Rosa. My teammates, Robert Whiteford and Mark Diacasey, have both trained with him as well. So, you know, there's plenty of stuff that they've given me in regards to what he does. But, you know, we don't really change the training too much. You know, I, I do what I'm good at and I stick to that. You know, if anything, I let Charles think of a game plan for me. Um, but yeah, when your coaches are pretty confident of you taking that fire, it's always that little, uh, I don't know, extra reassurance. You know, Brad didn't look at me and go, whoa, you know, it's a tough <laughs> fight. You know, he was like, take that fight. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. So, um, yeah, as I always say, I mean, I'm never going to turn an opponent down either, especially not in my hometown. Well, that's it. That's where I want to end, of course, Saturday night. We've finally got a, a London boy walking out in London. The fans are going to go ballistic. Mm -hmm. When you play it out in your mind, and I'm sure you've been playing it out in your mind for almost a year now yep. because of what happened in March, but, you know, the expectation of walking out, is it? are you going to have to, you know, take a deep breath and control your emotions because, you know, this is your town? Yeah, I'm just going to soak it all up. You know, I did it, obviously, in 2019. And it was probably one of the best experiences in my life. So to now be doing it again and knowing what to expect, um, it's going to be special. So I just need to put on a performance for the crowd and, uh, yeah, enjoy every minute of it. The prospect after the bonus here? I'd like one. I'd like a nice performance the night bonus. Nice, easy fight. I don't want to be taking too many shots to uh, get fired the night bonus. Mate, I'm secretly keeping all my fingers crossed, but I know we won't need it. Looking forward to Saturday night. Thank you. Appreciate it. Nice one, buddy.